Welcome on in to the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Wildcats Today, joined by my co-host, Carson Nash. Carson, I'm going to see you at the game tonight, buddy. You excited? I'm very excited. Uh, more excited now after that bounce back win on Wednesday against Mississippi State. I'm with you there. And getting into that game, before we really break down this Georgia game, you know, a lot of people, I think, have, have you know, everyone's excited about a win. But I think a lot of people have written off the win as, oh, well, it's Mississippi State and Rupp Arena. I'll tell you this. Mississippi State, numbers-wise, is an incredible defense. They are 16th in the Ken Palm ratings on when it comes to their defensive efficiency. And they are top 10 in some other metrics. So this is a good, elite Mississippi State defense. And what did Kentucky do? They hung their average on them. So, and speaking of average, Carson, what was that number you told me before uh, we got going here? Yeah, so uh, your Kentucky Wildcats are nationally number one in points per game at 90.8 points per game average. Pretty incredible stuff. I mean, let me ask you another question. Just, just uh, let, me, let me ask a question. Is this the best offense? And, and, and you can't, the answer to this can't be a definite no, in my opinion. It has to be a debate. Is this so long way to go? Does this have the opportunity to be the best defense? I'm sorry, offense in John Calipari history at Kentucky in his tenure at Kentucky? Do you think so? I think it's a good question. Yeah i I think um, I think when it's all said and done, they will be mm-hmm. because we haven't seen we haven't seen teams reach this this these numbers yet. Um, yeah. The you, you think of good offensive teams in the Cal era. You think of the Fox and Monk team. They were really explosive. Yeah. And um, you kind of think of the, ah, oh gosh, I would say maybe the Murray and Euless team too. They were pretty good offensively. Yeah. Um, but nothing really like this. This is uh, something we really haven't seen before. Cal is normally a defensive-minded coach. He likes to play big and compact things. Uh, so this is really rare what we're seeing, which is good. I mean, it's a lot of fun watching an offense like this where they like to they like to shoot threes. They like to do this stuff. I mean, you know, there was that streak kind of before SEC play where they were making, you know, 10, 15 a game, and it was exciting. I mean, this is this, – it's fun basketball. But now the flip side of that, Carson, another topic we wanted to get into is the defense. So we talked about how Kentucky hangs their average on one of the best defenses of college basketball. That's exciting. That's impressive. But then they go on – The defense is better. Now, was it perfect? No. You got that 14-2 run right out of the half that just, I mean, I I crawled up a wall and scissor kicked everybody in the press box when that happened. It was frustrating. But all in all, defensively, I thought this was a better game of basketball from the Wildcats. Not where it needs to be. be. We need to be here. We were here. That game felt like, here you know what I mean a step in the right direction Carson do you agree with that yeah I definitely agree Uh, I feel like they um they had a idea that they were coming into the game and wanted to prove something in my opinion just just the way they the effort the hustle on the defensive end it seemed like um outside of the 14 to 2 run stretch um it kind of felt like they just came out flat in the second half they're like oh we already won this game um but outside of that it it was a pretty impressive night defensively. You went mute for a second, Carson. You back? Unmute yourself. Did you mute? All right, you're back. Sorry, I'm having some I'm having some technical difficulties. No, you're good. You're back. You're back. You're back. But no, I agree with you. And speaking on the defense. I think that we lost Carson again. Hold on. All right. We got you. There we go. Goodness gracious. All right. There we go. All right. I guess you got stuff to do, huh? But (laughs) so, like I said, I agree with all the takes there on that Mississippi State game. It's one. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, Mississippi State in the net rankings is a pretty good team. This is a quad two win, and when the Cats go to play them in Starkville, it's a quad one win if they get the win. So this is not 
Vanderbilt. This is not, you know what I mean? I'm not sitting here saying that this is the Harlem Globetrotters, but they're also not, you know, a bad basketball team. It's a middle-of-the-road SEC team. You didn't let them come in your house and beat you, and that means something. So last thing I want to talk about, Antonio Reeves, Carson, my goodness. He played a incredible game of basketball. 27 points in this one. And this is what I thought was interesting about that game. 27 points. You know, we talked about Wade Taylor from that Mississippi State game. It was 27 points on 8 of 12. Wade Taylor scores 31 on 8 of 42. You know, Reeves scores 27 on 8 of 12. And here's the kicker. Here is the kicker. Just like uh, Jake Elliott for your Eagles, who are no longer in the playoffs. Um, the kicker is, I'm sorry, that was really uncalled for. <laughs> but Reeves only makes two three-pointers in this game. Carson, last year, Reeves was a three-point shooter. Now, he's getting to the rim. He's dunking. He is, that floater is down to a science. What do you have to say about Reeves' game as a whole? Well, he is coming into his own right now. and it, it really reminds me of a sophomore year Emmanuel quickly. He's taken that extra leap and he's making changes to his own game to almost model himself after NBA players. Like he, he is an NBA player right now. Um, and I was looking at some stats. Um, now it is mid season, so these can change, but um, he's, he has increased his field goal percentage by 10 percentage points based mm. off of being able to attack the basket. Yeah. And that is huge. Now he is he's also shooting better percentages from three, mm -hmm. but I think that has a lot to do with being open more the times than not. And it and it also they have to leave him open sometimes because he can now beat you off the dribble. So exactly. he's just really hard to guard. He can beat you in every way possible. And I think he should be the front runner for the SEC player of the year right now. Well, let me ask you a question, okay? Let me ask you a question. So, I would say the players that are the front runners right now is, um, you know, in a group, I would say Reeves is in there. I wouldn't say he's the front runner, but he's in the conversation. I think you've got Sears from Alabama, and then I think you've got Dalton Connect over at Tennessee. Um, you know, Dalton Connect is playing some really good basketball right now. Carson, and I, I know you wanted to talk about that. you have anything to say about that? Yeah, so um, he's getting a lot of publicity in the Andrew. He's getting a he lot of publicity. NBA publicity as well. Yeah, no, he's he's projected. Uh, last time I looked, it almost looked like he was a lottery pick. He could be now. But um, let's just say this. Antonio Reeves has better stats in almost every category than mm -hmm. Dalton Connect. And he gets minimal hype. He gets yeah. minimal hype. And that might have a lot to do with the supporting cast we have on our team because our freshmen get a lot of the hype. Rob Dillingham gets a ton of hype, which is – he should because he's awesome. But it kind of looks like Antonio Reeves is kind of getting thrown under the bus a little bit. Like he's not – no one's talking about him. Like he's just – you know, it's kind of it's sad, but I'm I'm going to be the first one to say that I think he's the best player in the SEC, and he he deserves the hype. He he deserves it. Here's the deal: if he keeps playing like he did against Mississippi State, the hype is undeniable. You know, the thing about Dalton Connect is he. I mean, let's as much as we dislike the color orange and the entire state of Tennessee, unless you're a Kentucky fan looking at Tennessee, then we do like you. Yes. But um, and I'm kidding, Tennessee fan. Well, maybe I'm not, Carson. Are we not kidding about that statement? Are we not going to walk that back? You, you might be me? you might be kidding. I'm not. Okay, fair enough. You know what? I appreciate that. I'll let you stand by that. I will not. But um, the dude's on a heater. Dalton Connect is playing really good basketball right now. And when that happens, it builds a pipe. I mean, he scored – I mean, he's averaging probably like 32 points a game over those four or five games. I mean, he's been great. He has been. But Reeves, if he can get going on a heater – but here's the deal. Reeves is always on a heater. He's scoring 18 points or better every single night. You know, Connect is just on this 36 points a game thing, and, and that's not sustainable. It's just not. Mm -hmm. Reeves scores a, a – you know, a, like an average. He's scoring – like a bad game for Reeves, like 14, 15 points. A bad game for Reeves. He's and scoring you gotta think, the ball. you got to think also, Tennessee really doesn't have any other scores other than yeah. Dalton. 
So Muscovy's been awful this year. Yeah. So they really rely on that guy. So if that guy goes on a cold spell for a couple of games, they might drop a couple in this in the uh, conference. Yeah. I mean, I say Viscovi's been awful. I'm curious. I mean, I watched him. I, I've watched him. Yeah, Viscovi's only Viscovi's averaging seven points a game. What? Guess what he's shooting from three? What? Thirty two percent. Wow. You know, and the reason that it's funny, I, I said he was struggling and I wanted to check because I was like, you know what? I have I, I've watched Tennessee play a few times and I've yet to see him make a three pointer. I'm serious. And I was kind of like, so I need to make sure that he's actually struggling and he's not just struggling when I'm watching. He's actually struggling, which is a big deal. I mean, because he's like 32 years old. Yeah. Um, And I hate the old guards that can shoot the ball. Those guys are the worst. So I'm yeah. ready for Viscovi to move on to whatever he's got next with his basketball career or life. I mean, maybe he'll be the ninth year guy, like the tight end of Miami. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. But um, But getting into the Georgia game. Now that's the Mississippi state game. Reeves played great. Defense was better. Offense was incredible. Now you play the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia is out to a hot three and one start in SEC play. Should be four and oh, had they not choked a little bit against the Tennessee Volunteers we just got done talking about, which does actually stink because that would have been another loss on the resume for Tennessee and would have helped Kentucky's, you know, SEC regular season title chances. Would have been big. Um, but they're three and one with wins over Missouri 75 68 on the road for the for the Bulldogs. Then you got the they beat the Hogs at home, they beat Arkansas by 10 in um Athens. They lose to Tennessee in Athens 85 79, but they had that game won and choked yeah. in the last couple minutes. And then they beat South Carolina in Columbia. That's that right there is an impressive win. South Carolina's been playing good basketball, it's a good win for them, but. You know, I always try and find a stat to harp on when I when I talk about a team. You know, a stat that's like this really stands out about this team. You know, find a stat to harp on, and my stat to harp on for Georgia. You want to know what it is? Oof. They're just kind of mid. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> I I usually find I'll go to the NCAA website and find a stat for each opponent, um, and I'll look at everything. You know, I'm not I, I'll just pick one and stop. I'll find every stat that they're you know top twenty five, top fifty in. And kind of talk about okay, this is what this team's good at. You know what Georgia is top 50 in, Carson? Every single stat that NCAA website offers. Do you know what stat that they're top 50 in? Oh gosh. Uh I don't know. I could not have. a single one. Not a single one, which is really impressive. So they are and like I said, and then I look that, that some stats are at like the 84, like they're just mid. They're not like 483rd in these stats, although I don't think there are four. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they are just middle of the road. They're a mid-okay basketball team. When it comes to uh, Ken Palm, they're 69th. They are 109th in offensive efficiency and 44th in defensive efficiency. So the defense is okay. The offense is kind of meh, you know, but the defense is fine. Um, the overall rating is nice, but mm – -hmm the defense is better than the offense. So none of those numbers scare me, Ken Palm wise. Um, it's a big team. It's a big team. Uh, they go six, eight, six, eight, seven foot, six, four, six, five to Kentucky's six, four, six, six, seven, one, six, eight, six, nine. So Kentucky's still a little bit bigger, but not compared to some of, you know, the other, you know, teams where Kentucky's a lot bigger. So Carson, what are your thoughts on this game? I think you feel pretty confident in the Cats in this one. Yeah, so I'm I'm definitely pretty confident in the Cats. Um, George is big, but their big mm -hmm. doesn't translate into rebounds. So that really is not worrisome. Um, when you're big and, and we've played teams in the past, like Florida and A&M, who just hound the rebounds and they're very athletic. Um, but this team doesn't do that. So they're yeah. kind of – there, you know, in football, you know, you're big for no reason. Like, if you're not – your offensive lineman, you're not very good, big for no reason. Uh, yeah, kind that of was them. us. Yeah, that was us. That's that's kind of Georgia right now. They're big for no reason. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to translate into a lot of points for us because they might not be as quick and explosive, so we're going to get a lot of runouts. And I think the Cats are going to – I think they're going to whoop up on the Georgia Bulldogs today. I do too. 
I do too. And so this is funny. Um, the you know you talk about the rebounding. They're, they're a, a large team. They have 177 total offensive rebounds on the season. I uh, you know they and them with that amount against us. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> that was great. Yes, they did. No, they had that amount in the first half against us. <laughs> but um, 177 offensive rebounds on the season for the Bulldogs. Divide that by these 17 games they have played. That is 10.4 offensive rebounds a game. That is, for a, for reference, AM averages 18. Averages 18. I believe they had 25 against us for 21 off, uh, second chance points. So, you know, if they get 10 offensive rebounds, that can't kill you. Unless it turns into 10 threes, and then that's a different conversation. But, yeah, um, I think looking at this, I'm with you, Carson. Uh, I mean, I, I know we're going to wrap this up, but uh, um, I mean, I, I I don't think this is – those of you that have listened to us do this show, the first, you know, handful of, of, of games for SEC play, know that I, 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 I can be a little timid about games. I, I'm, I'm quick to be concerned about things. I'm really not worried about this ballgame. I think Georgia has picked on some not great SEC teams, except for Tennessee. Um, no, they did have Tennessee beat. Like I said, that you can't deny that. They they choked there. But the rest of it, I think that, you know, Missouri's pretty awful. And I think Arkansas is the worst team ever created. Um, I think that South Carolina is kind of the same thing as Georgia. They're just kind of okay. You know, they're fine. So they haven't, you know, beaten anybody impressive. They did hang with Tennessee, as I said. I think that the Cats get a big win. I think they win handsomely, frankly. I think they win this game handsomely and move to – would it be four and one, right? Mm -hmm. Four and one in yep. SEC play, um, in in the home streak. So Carson, give me your final score prediction. Give me your your betting stuff you want to talk about. Betting stuff, final score prediction, MVP. I'll tell you mine, and we'll call it a day. Yeah. So the line right now is at fourteen. It started at eleven and wow. a half. Um, I would have felt more comfortable taking it at eleven and a half than I do fourteen. Um. But I do think the Cats are going to win by more than 14. I just don't know if I would I would take that line. I would probably bet it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, Where would you bet it down at? You were saying 9? I, I, would, bet, I would bet 9, 10, just because okay. I feel like that's kind of certain at that yeah. point. Um, but I think the Cats are going to hit the century mark tonight. I think uh, they get over 100. Uh, I'm going to say they – I'm going to go 101 to 80. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, the final score is, and that would that would definitely hit the over as well. Um, so if you're a bet man like myself, that's what I would like to take. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say I'm gonna get all aboard on the train. I think Reeves is going to go off again tonight, and it's gonna be the spark that gets him some more publicity in the media, and he's gonna be starting to jump for that SEC Player of the Year tonight. Yeah, if I'm with you on that. Before I give mine, if Reeves has that type of game tonight. It, his player of the year race really needs to kick off. If he goes 25 on, you know, eight of 13 shooting. Yeah. You know, it, it's all about the efficiency too with him. Yeah, exactly. You're right. So my final score, I'm not quite as bold as Carson. I think the cats score 95, go about four points over their, their average raising their average. I think the bulldogs score 76 to cover the spread that we talked about. That's a blowout win in Rupp Arena. Should be a pumped up Rupp Arena um, on a Saturday. Uh, in the home stretch with two wins. I think the MVP in this game is, I think it's going to be an interesting one. I think it is going to be Uganda and Yinso. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. And I forgot about it. Carson, after I'm done talking about this, give me your one minute you go, you go rant. I know you okay. want to give one minute you go rant. And I want yeah. to, I want to get, because it was a good one. So I want to make, we almost forgot. I want to give people that rant. But mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm not saying Hugo's not going to lead the team in scoring. Yeah, you know, that's not what I'm saying. But I think if if he can have another game where he gets six points, seven rebounds, and blocks four shots, and has a you know a, a plus eleven, you know, we'll take that. Um, I, and I just think he's continuing to build himself up as a legitimate guy on this team, a a, a big help to this team. So I I think Hugo has a good game. Like it's not going to light up the stat sheet for twenty and in fifteen, but if he gave you six or you know eight or six, uh, seven and four blocks, I'll take that all night. Carson, give us your rant, and we're going to get out of here. 
Yeah, actually, I like that call because they're a bigger team. Uh, yeah. We're going to need Hugo. Um, but my rant is we saw in the Mississippi State game, Uganda had a good game. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I looked, I, I did, did some digging. Um, between the AM and Mississippi State game, uh, Uganda played 49 total minutes. He had 10 points, which, I mean, doesn't light up, light it up. But yeah. he had 16 rebounds and nine blocks. <laughs> and nine blocks. That dude is a defensive menace. And he creates runouts. And he creates yeah. points for us and takes away points from the other team. And that's huge. And you can see his confidence growing, which is even bigger. Because once he starts to get into his own and be, be a confident player, we need that March. We need you go March because if Bradshaw gets in early foul trouble or we have injuries or anything like that, we need you go. So that's huge to see. Yep. I'm fully with you on that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up. If you haven't already um, hit that subscribe button, like the episode, it does help a ton. We would appreciate that a lot. Everybody have a good weekend. Have a good Saturday. We got some playoff football coming up. We got a big game for the Cats this evening. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we'll see you all again on Monday to break down next week's matchup and, and the post game here and next week's game, which I believe is against the South Carolina Gamecocks in Columbia. So we will, be, we will break that down next week on Monday. Everybody have a great rest of your day today. Enjoy the game. Go Cats. And we will see you next time.